Greetings, Loyal Talk TV watchers. This is Jim Casey, live on the scene, doing a special documentary on new construction in East Huntsville. Today, I'm near Goldsmith Schiffman Field, which we're going to talk about in just a minute, and checking out this uh, new apartment complex being built adjacent to Pratt Avenue. This is coming along very nicely. We're just going to do a complete walk around today. If you have uh, any chat comments, chat's open. That last video I did was kind of messed up, but I made some more adjustments. I think I got it right this time again, but I was trying to push the envelope on some of the resolution and stuff. I think this is going to work out pretty good. This building is a monstrosity. There's three or four of this magnitude being built in downtown Huntsville. This one's three stories. And it's a large wraparound with a courtyard in the middle. Now, they've done that before, but I don't think they've had any quite this large in Huntsville before. I don't think there's any mixed use with this one. And uh, let's see here. I think I need to go across the street to get a better angle on this. Oops. <laughs> you can see I'm in the area of the Children's Advocacy Center. I'm not sure what they put in here. They're going to be some sort of uh, making some kind of adjustments in the roadways here. There's a Children's Advocacy over there. And the beloved Chevron on Pratt Avenue. Get across the street to the sidewalk. But this is just more the indication of what's going on in Huntsville during the last five years or so. This building boom is going on in downtown Huntsville. There's probably been eight or ten or twelve construction projects, large ones of that, just in downtown. And uh, aside from that, of course, there's a ton of building going on to the east and to the west and to the north. And, uh, Obviously, this thing's being completed in phases. One phase down on this end is closer to completion. We've got the, uh, I guess that's some sort of a wrapper to seal it off. Probably have some sort of boards underneath that other than the plywood. I don't know. There again, I'm not the construction guy. They know what they're doing, I guess. I like the sidewalk for a minute here.
And of course, I'm on Pratt Avenue. And Pratt Avenue has been closed or partially closed for several months. So if you're in this part of town, slow down and be careful. Uh, some fellas doing some heavy lifting here. Oops. All right, fella. He's running that thing from the carriage. He's on. This is Wide Street. And here's the friendly neighborhood Waffle House, just to the slightly west of Five Points, which is right up there. Last time I was in this area taking pictures during COVID, they had big signs on the doors, windows, phone numbers to call. I don't know if they were delivering or just to take it outside for curb service at that point. Big nice thing. Now this entryway here, it looks like, is a uh, foyer, an oversized foyer that goes all the way into what will be the grand courtyard, which you can see there. Let's see. Apparently, If the zombies get cut loose for some reason after the COVID maybe, that thing might bounce back. Then the residents can take refuge back up in there. Keep the zombies on the outside. <laughs> Like they're gonna run this thing on solar power. That doesn't look like a lot of electricity for the whole complex though. So. Now one thing I've noticed and I've already said about this one and one of the others, even though Goldsmith Schiffman is right Don't here. Protect his field. Pardon? Don't let him take away this field. <laughs> Sooner the better. <laughs> But uh, they still play football and soccer over here. But there's no sky bridge. Why aren't they putting a sky bridge from the uh, apartment complex over to the field? And they did that over at uh, over at the end of Dallas Street. They got one. They they could have a sky bridge over the train tracks, so they could get over that little shopping complex up there. But. So this Goldsmith Shipment Field has been here, I don't know when they built this thing, like the 40s or 50s or something. And uh, a lot of people consider this to be a reflection of the Calhoun House downtown because of these brick, rock brick walls that, uh, that are mockish. 
uh, of the courtyard area that uh, Calhoun, John Calhoun Meredith had back in the 1800s. Now that story, the way it actually goes is, a fellow named William Smith built the Calhoun house and he was a big top eagle legal. And it appears that uh, his whole family's been running the court system in Huntsville for the last 150 years. His family still has hooks in the circuit court and the district court. And, uh, but anyway, William Smith built the Calhoun house and when he died, his granddaughter, Mary Smith, inherited more than 30 slaves. And then she married John Meredith Calhoun, who was from up north somewhere. And uh, so, but John Meredith Calhoun was a prolific slave trader. So the 30 slaves or so that probably spent their time behind the walls of the in the courtyard there at the Calhoun house up on Green Street uh, were just a few. Said he uh, he owned about half the state of Louisiana as the story goes and uh, at the end of the day he traded in thousands of slaves and uh, uh, even though you know there are smaller plantations like the one they had here one that he had in Louisiana was very, very large. And of course, John Meredith Calhoun was renowned for his participation in enforcement of, of eugenics, which, as though slavery is not a human rights violation to begin with, the, uh, the rest of the story is that much more reprehensible. Now, it's been discussed and they'll argue about whether or not this facade is intentionally a reflection of the Calhoun House courthouse, courtyard. But the fact of the matter is, it's what people think. And the fact of the matter is, they should have torn this thing down, just like that Confederate monument should have been moved to uh, Maple Hill Cemetery all those years ago, instead of just a couple of years ago. You can see all the way through there. But they should have torn down this brick structure 40 or 50 years ago when it was more appropriate. And uh, there it is. Nice field, no reason why the field couldn't stay, but uh, this contempt for civil rights uh, continues to have an under, undertow. They know what they're doing. And uh, uh, if anyone thinks Things are becoming more progressive here. Maybe they have been in the past, but there are more and more indications that hardcore fascism is setting in into some quadrants, some pockets, and becoming more and more, uh, more and more confident in what they're doing. So anyway, the, that's that story. Mention also the Calhoun House was, uh, you know, the, that's where the trial of Frank James was for robbery, a uh, federal payroll in Muscle Shoals. And uh, the jury let him off for whatever reason. And uh, might have been Northern sentiments. This is a nice neighborhood over here. Nice day. There's a 565 over there. So this has been about a two block walkabout, chat about. That's me, Jim Casey, the innovator, reinventing 
broadcast journalism on my terms, not according to mainstream media who is attempting to impose censorship on other people like me because they want a monopoly. And they don't just want the monopoly for the uh, money involved. They want the monopoly because they want to control the sale. They want to, they want to uh, dictate the narrative and they want to eliminate opposing viewpoints even though they are absolutely correct. And uh, that's one of the things I do on my website. And you're invited, please, to visit my website, www.tocc.tv. And, well, this has been Jim Casey for Talk TV, broadcasting live from East Huntsville, where construction progress is underway and is occurring right next door to an Old South vestige of racism and slavery. Very sad. Thanks, have a good day, and thanks for watching.